wait a second, what? What did he say? One of the most powerful men in the world made a statement last week that is rocking the world and you need to know exactly what he said and what it means for you. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So today I am going to give you some breaking news. I wasn't planning this video, but it's breaking news because just a few days ago, one of the most powerful men in the world, the governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, made a speech, not just to anybody, but to all the central bankers of the world. They all got together and he made a speech about a bunch of things, but there were some comments that he said that are rocking the world and are gonna drastically change things faster than you might imagine. And so I want to talk about that. So um, just last week, the, the Bank of England governor, Mark Carney, um, they uh, all the central bankers um, of the world met together in Jackson Hole. Um, this was August 23rd. And so they got together and uh, he made some shocking announcements. Before I get to that, though, I want to let you know that um, I have some winners. I said that we were going to give away some free Bitcoin. I did a sweepstakes in conjunction with DropBit and I asked people to drop, download the DropBit app. Give me your unique DropBit address and I would send you $25 of Bitcoin. Um, I got a bunch of entries. Everybody hopefully got their... Um, the uh, report, the free report, and hopefully you like that. Um, unfortunately, everyone didn't really understand the instructions, and so you were supposed to put your DropBit address in there. Um, it was the whole point of downloading the DropBit app, and a lot of people didn't. They just gave me a Bitcoin address, so unfortunately, they didn't get um, entered into the sweepstakes. Um, however, we got plenty of people that did follow the instructions, and we have two winners. So Hardy0038 uh, at um, the rest of your email, and Nathaniel Champion Products at the rest of your email. You are each getting $25 each in Bitcoin um, to your DropBit app, so stay tuned for that. Uh, you'll get those out, and uh, thanks for everyone who competed in that sweepstakes. All right, now getting right back into the news. Sorry for that. To get right back into the news, Mark Carney. He is not just anybody. Like I said, he's one of the most powerful men in the world. I don't take that lightly. Um, he is very connected. Now, maybe they say the President of the United States is the most powerful man in the world. I think... Uh, Maybe the head of the U.S. Federal Reserve might be just as important, if not more important. Um, and Mark Carney is definitely right up there. Now, um, he was the he was formerly with Goldman Sachs, which is at the top of the heap. Goldman Sachs kind of rules the world when it comes to finance. When I say one of the most powerful men in the world, the reason why I say that is because a famous quote by Mayor Rothschild, and he said that I care not who makes a nation's laws. I only want control of the money. If he can take control of the money, he doesn't care who takes control of the laws, right? So that's why these guys are controlling the money. The, the United States Federal Reserve and Mark Carney controls the Bank of England, um, another major superpower in the world. And so he was uh, with former, uh, formerly with Goldman Sachs. Um, he's booing the Bank of England as the governor there, and he is on his way out. The reason why I make that distinction is he's on his way out is because what happens is when people get to the end of their careers, especially when they're leaving the Fed or some type of a, of a big position like that, they a lot of times will say stuff that they wouldn't say while they're in their job or while they're looking for re-election. And so a lot of times we get a lot more candid, a lot more truthful, open stuff. And so he's in that kind of role right now. Usually they wait till after they leave. He's in the process of leaving, um, but maybe that had some reason why he's making these statements. Um, but basically to the entire uh, central banker meeting, he laid out some shocking proposals. And basically, he urged uh, the, the world, the global system, to replace the U.S. dollar with a Libra-like reserve currency uh, in a dramatic revamp of the entire global monetary system, financial system. Massive. He said, hey, world, we should get rid of the U.S. dollar. Why is the U.S. dollar the reserve currency of the world? We need something better. He said that in the longer term, we need to change the game. Quote, we need to change the game. He said market forces are likely to force a rapid switch to reserve assets. He said in economics, things take longer to happen than you would think. And then they happen faster than you thought they could. Think about that. In economics, things take longer to happen than you think they will, but then they happen faster than you thought they could. So kind of like the 10 years that's been leading up to this, 
or maybe the 50 years of fiat currency experiment that we've been having. So it's like taking a longer time for this fiat experiment to break down or die, but then it's going to happen faster than you think it could. He says that uh, it, uh, when a change comes, it shouldn't be able to swap one currency hegemon for another. Hegemon, what does that even mean? <laughs> So hegemon is uh, like a leader, like a like a global reserve standard. Like um, so, that's that's basically what the U.S. is. The U.S. dollar is the reserve standard of the world. So he says that we shouldn't be able to swap one currency a hegemon for another. He doesn't want to see another reserve standard by one single currency. Big statements. Um, basically, what he said is he said that. Uh, but equally, blithe acceptance of the status quo is misguided. So people bankers, politicians who think the status quo is okay, he says that they are, uh, they're misguided. They're missing the point. It's something that we talk about a lot with a normalcy bias. And normalcy bias is a condition where we think that whatever the situation that we're in currently is the way that things will continue to go. If the prices are down, they're going to stay down. If the prices are going up, the prices are going to continue to go up. Um, if we've gone without cryptocurrencies, we'll never have cryptocurrencies, right? So the status quo, whatever is there will continue to be as normalcy bias. And he's saying that blithe acceptance of the status quo is misguided. So he sees this happening and he sees it happening in a rapid state. Um, he went on to say that um, um, a new synthetic hegemonic currency, an SHC, so a synthetic hegemonic currency, so not a real hegemonic, but a synthetic one, would be best provided by the public sector. Wow. <laughs> this is the head of the Bank of England said this to the other central bankers. We're used to them talking bad. Christine Lagarde says uh, we need to stop innovation because it's going to disrupt the financial system. But here he is right here saying that a new synthetic hegemonic currency would be best provided by the public sector, not by another government, not by a central bank, but by the, by the public sector. He said that perhaps through a network of central bank digital currencies, kind of like what uh, Facebook Libra has been proposing. Um, so imagine that. He considers the replacement of the current dollar reserve system a synthetic hegemonic currency. So he wants to replace the dollar. He's proposing that the dollar be replaced, but not by another fiat hegemonic um, currency, but one by a public sector, maybe like Bitcoin. Think about that. Think about how big this is. Or maybe by Facebook. Facebook is a public sector. Um, he went on to say that an SHC, uh, which is the synthetic hegemonic currency, could dampen the domineering influence of the U.S. dollar. So again, he wants to get rid of the U.S. dollar. He doesn't want another nation or another hegemonic uh, money to take its place. He wants it to be uh, more fluid from a public sector. Massive, massive news coming from somebody like this. So is the game over? Is the fiat game over? Like I said, we've been in for 5,000 years. We've been seeing gold being the basis of money. We're 50 years into a monetary experiment. We're 50 years into this fiat currency that has no backing, has no value, and it, and it hasn't been going good. As a matter of fact, it's been exploding since day one. And so does this mean it's over? Um, is, this that, is this the beginning of the central bank reformation? Is he going to say, okay, everybody, let's switch over and now everybody's accepting it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen that quickly. Like he said, it takes a longer time, but then it happens quickly. Um, but we do know that Bitcoin's 10 years of success is winning right now. I mean, 10 years it's been around and it went from being a joke, it went from being illicit activity, it went to all of a sudden the president of the United States is tweeting about it, the head of the Federal Reserve is talking about it, and now we have somebody actually recommending to the meeting of the central bankers that it's time to get rid of the U.S. dollar and go to something like this. So uh, if you've watched the previous videos, you know we don't know what's next. We don't have a crystal ball. It would sure make it so much easier if we did have a crystal ball. So we don't know if it's going to be Bitcoin. We don't know if they'll go back to gold. Um, but we do know that something is going to change. We do know that the U.S. dollar is out. It's on its way out. If you watch the two-part series we did um, outlining the, the way that that changes, you'll know. Um, but today, today, I'm telling you, they're calling for this. It's going to happen. Um, the establishment members are calling for it, right? So basically why they want to do this is they want everyone's trying to devalue their currencies. We've talked a lot about this. They want to make their currencies worth less money because it's easier for them to pay back, right? They can pay it back when, when money is hardly worth anything, and that's how they get out of the fiat system. Now, what's going to be done about all this? 
So what they want to do is they want to create another system, a non-fiat currency, and, and it could be gold, um, it could be Bitcoin, it could be some other type of cryptocurrency. Um, but then what happens is the central banks can devalue against that. And as they devalue their currencies, it makes it super cheap for them to pay back their debts. Uh, so it's kind of one big game. Uh, they'll devalue the currencies. That's most likely what I think is going to happen. It's going to be very interesting. So the question is if the central banks are going to allow it but I think they will, right? This, it's gonna be a battle between the central banks and the governments, uh, but I think they will. It's, it's really, it's the only practical alternative that we have. Um, and, and we're already starting to see the central banks starting to promote or endorse cryptocurrency. Uh, so I think that's the likely uh, alternative. Now, we have seen, and I've reported on this a bunch of times, we've seen Russia, we've seen China um, increasing their massive gold reserves. I talked about how Last year, the central banks bought more gold than any time in history since 1971, the year the world got off the gold standard. And so all the central banks are buying gold. We've heard lots of rumors about China wanting to, uh, China and Russia actually trying to back their currencies with gold. So maybe we'll see some type of a gold-backed currency, gold-backed currency slash digital currency. Uh, we don't really know, uh, but we do know that the dollar's days are numbered. So at the end of the day, what am I saying? I'm saying to be prepared. Again, we don't have a crystal ball, so we have to be prepared. Um, it's going to be really bad for those that aren't prepared. For those that aren't paying attention to these signs, it could be really bad, but you are. You're paying attention to these signs. It's not going to be as bad. Um, <laughs> hopefully, you're not in the camp where you just believe these central bankers know what they're doing and everything's going to be fine. I find it ironic, and if not, if not, maybe even sad, how much time people spend on thinking about making money um, all the time going to school, um, all the debt and going to college, um, all that time you put in your job, all that time to make money, but people don't really take the time to think about what happens to their money after they've made it, uh, protecting it, growing it, and all those things. And so you need to be paying attention. And luckily, you're on this channel, so you are. I know you are. You're paying attention. And so you're going to be prepared. You're one of the few. Um, so that's it. That's the update. It's kind of the emergency update that I have. It was big breaking news, and I wanted to bring it to you guys. And uh, just further proves the thesis that we're on, that the dollar is dying and we're being prepared in the right way. I'm going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks the way that I think is the easiest and probably the most effective way to be set up to take, to take on these changes, where to put the money. I'm breaking it down to what I call the four pillars, four different areas that you should be putting your money to um, protect it and also grow it in this transfer. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you like this video, give me some thumbs up on the video. I know it's big news. And if you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Either way, let me know. I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment. I answer all the comments down below. I love to talk to each one of you. So please leave me a comment. And that's it. To your success, I'm out.